video, we are going to talk about the multiplication properties of exponents. On this slide, I've written b to the n, and I've said that it equals b times b times, and then there's a dot, 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 and then a times b. So what's happening here is we have what we call a power. A power is made up of a base, which is our normal number, and an exponent, which is the smaller number uh, that's up and to the right. And actually, I said number, but either of these could technically be variables. Uh, in this stage of our math career, only the base should be a letter, not the exponent. But later on, we could end up with an exponent being a letter as well. This is showing us, in general, what happens. So if I have b to the n, what's happening is repeated multiplication. We are being asked to multiply multiplication. We're being asked to multiply p, b together in times. So however much n is, that's how much we would be multiplying them together. We read this power as b to the n, although there are also a couple of special powers that have different names. If we wanted to do 5 to the second power, for instance, we could say the word squared instead of second power. So this would read 5 squared. Or if we wanted to do 7 to the third power, we could use the word cubed. Those words have to do with uh, dimensions. The second dimension, like a, the 2 here, in two dimensions we have figures like squares, whereas in three dimensions we have figures like cubes. So that's kind of where those two words came from and how you can remember uh, why a 2 is squared and a 3 is cubed. So we're going to explore what we can do with our exponents. And these instructions are very simply going to say to simplify. In general, in math, when we simplify, we're trying to take something and write down less and have it mean the same thing. So I, we have here x squared times x to the fourth. And the dot that's in between these isn't really necessary. We could just as easily have written them right next to each other, and we would still know that this is multiplication. So I mentioned that because there are times where, on a problem, there might be dots some places and not the other. And there is a method to the reason why textbooks will put dots some place and not other places. But for our purposes, we could either think of it like everything has a dot in between it on these problems, or like nothing has a dot in between them, whatever would be easiest for us to think about. If I want to simplify this, the idea I'm going to use is that x squared is repeated multiplication of x, only two of them though, because x squared means just x times x, just like 3 squared means 3 times 3. x to the fourth means that we're repeatedly multiplying x together four times. And I'm writing this out to point out how easy it is to see, hopefully, that the answer to this is how many x's we really have, which if I count them is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, we did that by expanding it and then counting the x's. If I look at my original problem, 2 and 4, there's an operation that I can use between those to get the number 6. And if we understand what that operation is, then we have a shortcut. We don't have to write this out every single time we need to simplify a problem. So hopefully you're thinking of what that operation is. It turns out that 2 plus 4 equals 6. And so if we multiply two powers together, we add their exponents, and that makes us, that allows us to combine them into the same base. So we just end up with a single x to the 6th power. Let's make it a little bit different. Here we have x squared being raised to another power. Another way that they could write it, and they don't because it looks more intimidating, is we could say that x squared is to the fourth power like this. But that just looks kind of weird. But if you wondered like if that was possible, yes, that's actually what we're doing here. So in this case, we're doing repeated multiplication of x squared. That's happening four times because whatever our exponent is, it's telling us to do, if we have parentheses, it's telling us to do what's inside that parentheses that many times. Well, if we learn something from A, we could just add the exponents together, 
Or if we wanted to just break it down further, we could make these all be x times x's. And either way, we should be able to come up with how many x's there are and what that means our exponent should be. So if we add them together, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, or if we count them, we should get 8. And then when we look back at our exponents, 2 and 4, we should be able to think of, a, of an operation that we use with 2 and 4 to get 8. 2 times 4 equals 8. So if we think about the difference between these two problems in order to help us distinguish when we should do which, in A, there were no parentheses and we had more than one x. So each x had its own exponent and that let us add the exponents together to get the right answer. But on B, there was a single x and there were two exponents and so those two exponents had to multiply together. Also the parentheses is a big sign that we're going to multiply. If you don't have parentheses in a problem, you shouldn't be multiplying exponents. Uh, if you do have parentheses, uh, there should be some multiplication. So part C, this is another case where that multiplication symbol doesn't have to be there. It could just as easily have had x and y right next to each other. If x and y are being raised to the third power, then we can just write x times y three times. And what's important here is you can't combine x and y together, so we have to write x to some power and y to some power. And the powers have to do with how many of each there are. There are three x's and there are three y's. And if I look back at what I start with, started with and I look at what my answer is, then we might be able to come up with the idea that it's kind of like we distributed this exponent into what's inside. As a side note, if this was a plus sign instead of a multiplication sign, this wouldn't work the same way. You can't distribute an exponent if there's an addition sign. So this is not the same as the normal distributive property. This is a special property of exponents. And in fact, we're going to fill in a chart of exponent rules. Each of these rules has a name. So product of powers is referring to multiplying two powers together. We just said a moment ago that this would be x to the sixth. And so our rule is that if we're multiplying two powers together, we add their exponents. So there's no parentheses here. We're going, and there's two bases that are the same. They're both x's, so that lets us add their exponents. The power of a power, so it's the second power raised to the fourth power. We said this would be x to the eighth. And so we multiply the powers together. So x to the a times b. The power of a product, so kind of combining the past two things, we gave each of the things inside the third power, and so in general, whatever it is on the outside, each thing on the inside is going to get that power, x to the a and y to the a. Now we're going to do some examples to see what kind of questions they can give us, and there will be some problems that use just one of these properties, some of them use more than one, and We'll just see what the best strategy is on each to figure out how to simplify. And one of the hardest things, I think, is that we don't just do exponent rules whenever we're doing this. They'll also throw in normal numbers that you have to deal with. So like I said, the fact that there is a dot in between certain places here is kind of arbitrary. It doesn't really matter where they put the dots because everything here is being multiplied together. And when everything is being multiplied together, there's not a distributive property that means that I need more to multiply more than one thing by two or more than one thing by five. Since it's all multiplication, we're allowed to pick out things to multiply together first. Um, and then as long as we just account for everything, then we'll have the right answer. So what I mean by that is we're allowed to take the two and the five that are normal numbers and think about those separately than the x's. We can actually think of this like it's two separate problems. One of them is what is the normal number that I get from 2 times 5, which is 10, and what is the new exponent I should give x because I'm combining these x's together. Since we don't have any parentheses in this problem, we should be adding their exponents together, and we need to make sure to remember that anything that doesn't have an exponent written is to the exponent of 1. So 3 plus 2 plus 1 gives us 6, so this is 10x to the 6th power. So the normal numbers in any problem we're going to deal with like 
we deal with normal numbers. We do normal multiplication here because they're not exponents. They're just a regular 2 and a regular 5, and they're being multiplied together. Then we'll look at the letters we have, and any letters with like bases will add their exponents, or if it has parentheses, we might multiply their exponents together. So another way to do this is that we could have expanded this to x times x times x, and then x times x for the x squared, and then times just a single x. And we could count out how many x's there are. That's always um, something that we can do. It's faster if we understand the rule, but you can always break it down if you're unsure of how to go about it. Let's look at b. We have y cubed raised to the fourth power. So when we see parentheses, that's when we need to think multiplying. We're going to take the 4 and the 3 and multiply them together to get y to the 12th. Again, you could write out y cubed four times. And so these parentheses aren't really necessary. I could rewrite that as just having dots in between them, right? And so then I would see, okay, I just need to add these exponents together. 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 12. So my answer is y to the 12th. Part C has a lot of things inside my parentheses. That last, um, the last rule we have, where we have a product of powers, power of products, whatever order that the words are, says everything in the parentheses needs to get the power from the outside. What people will often neglect to give the power is the normal number. So everything, including the 7. The 7 needs to be squared. The x needs to be squared. And these things that already have exponents need to be squared. If I do y squared and then I square it, I'm going to have to multiply those exponents together. When I do z cubed and I square that, those will have to be multiplied together. So you don't have to write this step in between if you want to just do it in your head. Now we need to do 7 squared. 7 times 7 is 49. x squared just stays the same. y squared squared is y to the fourth because we multiply. And z cubed squared is 6. And this is our answer. We can't combine the x with the y and the z together because how would that even work? What letter would we use to describe x and y put together? There isn't one. So we just don't do that. We leave them separate. Let's look at some more examples. These examples uh, throw some negatives into the mix. Now these negatives we're going to just put, we're going to keep them with the numbers we have. So just like in the last example, I can think of this negative 2 and this negative 8 and this 3. I can think of those separately than I think of the, the letters, the variables. And again, all of this is multiplication. And so the negative doesn't go with the 2 and the m and the n. It just needs to be accounted for one time. So it's easiest if you just keep it with the number. Negative 2 times negative 8 is 16. 16 times 3, that's kind of tough. What if instead we do negative 2 times 3 and get negative 6? Negative 6 times negative 8 is 48. So our number should end up being 48. And it's positive because we had two negatives multiplied together. So we have to remember our rules about multiplying negatives together in order to make this work out OK. Then we can separate our m's. We have m to the fourth, we have regular m, and another regular m. Remember that those also have exponents of 1. And so we have 4 plus 1 plus 1, because we didn't have parentheses where we're raising a power to another power. So this is m to the sixth. And then we can separate out the n's, n into the ninth, and just n again. If it helps you after you separate something to mark it out, so, there, so that you don't forget anything, then that is a fairly good strategy. Sometimes we just overlook one of the letters and then it's annoying because we get it wrong. So again, we've got first powers, one plus nine plus one is 11. So my best answer here is 48 m to the sixth n to the 11th. Some of these, it's really easy to see how this is simpler. Obviously 48 m to the sixth n to the 11th is shorter than having this all written out. Some of them are not quite as easy to see why it's simpler. So remember that one of our things that we try to do with order of operations is we try to get rid of parentheses and exponents. 
well, we're not going to be able to completely get rid of exponents on a problem like B or C or A. There will still be exponents, but if there's parentheses, we can get rid of the parentheses, and what we have might have fewer exponents, which is still helpful. So on B, we've got negative k squared to the fifth. Now, if there's a negative in your problem in front like this, I recommend, but not another number, I recommend you think of this as negative 1. And so we need to think that both the negative 1 and the k squared are getting the fifth power. So we're going to do negative 1 to the fifth, and we're also going to do k squared to the fifth. Negative 1 to the fifth, if we try to figure that out, you may already know what it is off the top of your head, which is awesome. But if you're not sure, negative 1 to the fifth is us multiplying negative 1 out five times. So these two together would make a positive 1, and these two together would make a positive 1. And then we'd still be left over with a negative 1. And if I do a positive 1 times a positive 1 times a negative 1, overall this will still be negative 1. Then the k squared to the fifth power, I multiply those exponents together to get 10. Your teacher is probably okay with you leaving it like this, but know that you can also write it without that 1 in front of k, and that's actually the better way to write it. So if you just think about it like as you're writing it and just don't write the 1, then you won't have to write it down twice. It turns out, by the way, that any time we raise a negative number or a negative letter to the fifth power, or sorry, I wanted to be more general, a negative number to an odd power, we should end up with a negative result. Because if it's to an odd power, we'll always have um, the next lowest even number of negatives cancel out because they cancel out in pairs. So for instance, if we had a negative one to the ninth power. Well, you'd have the first two cancel each other out and the next two cancel each other out all the way until you've dealt with eight of them. And then you'd have one remaining negative that will make the whole thing negative. And so an odd power makes things negative, but as we'll see in part C, an even power will make things positive. So in this case, we have a lot more going on. We need to give the fourth power to this negative three we need to give the fourth power to the y to the sixth. And we need to give the fourth power to the z squared. So negative three to the fourth power is negative three times negative three times negative three times negative three. One of the biggest mistakes that I see students make is saying that this is negative 12 or something like that. And just not thinking through what it's actually asking us to do. Negative three to the fourth power, write it out, and then actually multiply it. This is 9 times 9 is the easiest way, in my opinion, to do it, which is 81. Remember that exponents give us big numbers very quickly. So getting a number like negative 12, we haven't gotten anywhere near a big enough number. So negative 3 to the fourth ends up being positive 81 because we have four different negatives that they each pair up and cancel out. These two cancel each other out, these two cancel each other out, so there's no negatives left over uh, to make this negative. And then we've got to multiply our exponents. So y to the 6 to the 4th is 24, and z squared to the 4th, that's not a z, is 8. So our answer here is 81 y to the 24th, z to the 8th. So these are the multiplication properties of exponents. I'm pretty sure, yep, that's all that there is to it. And so this is the first set in Algebra 1 of exponent rules that you learn. There will be more rules. There will be things that make it more complicated. The biggest thing I would say is to um, just try something, remembering that normal numbers, you need to do normal things like normal multiplication or, or raising it to a power like you did before you learned this section. Um, and that is, works differently than whenever we're dealing with variables and using the rules. So you just have to be careful and practice as much as you can because we want to um, hopefully get better at this as we go along. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and feel free to check out other videos. I have suggested one somewhere on the screen. If you want to know when I post new videos, hit the subscribe button and you can also follow me on Twitter at KSteveMath. If you have a math question that I haven't answered, tweet me a picture and I'll try to answer it. Thanks for watching.